morning. Welcome to worship of this Lord's Day. Would you stand? Let us begin our worship together in prayer. Holy God, you continue to amaze us. For your grace continues to pour out. We realize we're, we are so undeserving. But that, I guess, is the nature of sacred love. You have embraced us. And you said, this day you have made. And so, Lord, we gather in your name to rejoice in it but also to embrace the thankful spirit for the abundant ways in which you have blessed our lives and that hope that gives us for our tomorrows. So Lord, we pray that we will worship you in spirit and in truth in this marvelous day that you have made. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and let us sing together. We gather together. There's a lot of exciting things happening in the life of the church, and uh, before we go to local happenings, just want to note, uh, I think most of you may have received, I heard we ran out, so we can, we can print some more of these. If you need one, let me know, we'll mail to you or print some out uh, on the copy machine. It's the Thanksgiving Proclamation, and this is actually from the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches, it's an organization that we're a part of. Uh, Thanksgiving essentially is the high and holy day of congregationalists because our historical roots goes all the way to the Mayflower. So it's a special day, not just as we think of Thanksgiving as a country, but also as a people of faith. And I want to just encourage you that as you sit around the Thanksgiving table, that at some point uh, in, in sharing the meal and regular conversation we would have with our families is to pause and maybe read something that's here. There is a quotation uh, from one who was on the Mayflower. There's some scripture. There's some resolutions of ways to be thankful or perhaps go around the Thanksgiving table and just share with each other the things you're thankful for. And let's instill that spirit of thankfulness uh, in our families as well as we do it in our country. Well, there's a number of things happening in the life of the church. I want to get through them kind of quick. 
Uh, again, remind you, we are taking orders for poinsettias. I hear it, it's going well. So there will be a lot of poinsettia plants here. But if you haven't ordered one already, uh, there's an opportunity for you to do that uh, in the lobby. There's a, uh, a placard set up there and a way for you to sign up. Uh, this coming Saturday, we're going to be setting up the sanctuary for Christmas. And there's a need for persons to help volunteer. So if you're free on Saturday at 1 o'clock, please come and, and help with the Christmas decorations. And also, uh, this two weeks from today, on December 5, we're going to be re-engaging the Sunday Fellowship and Refreshments. Essentially what that is, uh, following the benediction... Uh, the, the, the music will continue on, and we're not just going to leave. The music will be playing. Uh, they're going to be hauling in uh, coffee and donuts, okay? That's what it's going to be, and we're going to be staying in this room. So don't feel you have to run out after worship. If you'd like to stick around and have some refreshments, uh, we will be getting that uh, on December 5, and uh, we're, we're thrilled to be able to, to do that. It's another way where we're able to get to know each other. Well, that's going to happen in two weeks, but in three weeks, there's a very special opportunity we have, and we're actually calling it uh, the Christmas dinner celebrations. It's different from what we've done in the past. This is essentially friends and fellowship celebration. The purpose of that is we have a number of new people who have connected to the church over the last 18 months, and we want to get to know each other. So there will be an opportunity for us to have a, a, a catered, elegant meal. Uh, there's even vegetarian options. Uh, there'll be specialty beverages, a stunning dessert, but really high quality uh, food service, if you will. And it's also, though it is ticketed, it's being highly underwritten. So we can do this as a church. We will have remarkable music by our professional musicians, and they also have some guests who'll be coming in. But it'll be an opportunity for us to mix together and to get to know uh, our community. We are a different church now than we were a few years ago. Uh, There's a different different uh, personality, if you will, that is the, the makeup of the collective body of Christ. But it is also a second option on December 12th. Maybe there's some people you know that you've been wanting to invite to this church. And uh, you wonder what would be an event for that? This would be a great event because they'll get to meet some of the people in the church. But there will be a time in that program where we're going to talk a little bit about this church, its mission, its ministry, uh, its music will be highlighted. And just an invitation will be extended for people to try us out, not only at Sunday at 430, but at Sunday morning in our worship. Now, our promise is we will be done in time for the Packer game that night, all right? <laughs> we understand how important that is. So you can just make it a full day and uh, enjoy that as well. So uh, please note that tickets are on sale today. Uh, we're probably a third of the way through the tickets already, just so you know. The response has been very, very, very strong. Uh, also, uh, how about membership? <laughs> Uh, some of you have been, been with us for a while. You've attended Exploring Membership class. This last week, I was visiting uh, a person who is new to this congregation. And she said, Pastor Lonnie, uh, here is my member information, and I'm ready to join, but I'm not going to do it alone. So if there's anyone else who feels that, you know, they made a point where they would like to unite in membership with the church, please let me know so I can join them. So I'm just... Uh, you know, it's not how many members you have, we say around here, it's how many difference makers you have, okay? It's not swelling the membership, it's being the body of Christ. But there is value in saying, you know, I'm making a commitment to this relationship. I feel this is where Christ wants me to be. So if you've reached that point and you say, I'm ready to own the covenant, let me know so we can take in this member who doesn't want to join alone, all right? So that's happening then. Also, uh, you'll notice the toys are here. They're also out in the lobby, and that's for the Waukesha Christmas Clearing Council. It's our mission for the month of November, and we're collecting toys that will be able to be given uh, to needy children in our county. So we just want to encourage you as you come. With the, it's good. You find toys all over the place. So uh, just want to note that. And uh, also, this is last Sunday we had our our Commitment Sunday. We are in that process of receiving estimates of intended giving, 
And if you haven't done that yet, we just want to encourage you to, because by having an idea of what you think God is leading you to give to this church and its mission and ministry, it's an opportunity for us to plan the kinds of ministries that we will be involved in in 2022. So I want to encourage you to do that. Also, uh, we will be receiving the offering in a little while, but you don't have to give just through the offering plate. You can give online, either through our website or through PayPal. Now, if you go to PayPal, make sure you, you enter the full church name. It's Fox River. you got to add the word community okay, in the middle of it. Fox River Community Congregation Church, and it's another way for you to be able to contribute to the church electronically. Would you stand down? Let us pray or sing together. Come, you thankful people, come as we prepare our hearts for the congregational prayer. This morning we're dedicating a quilt that's been requested by the Soros family for the family of John Sowuka, who died unexpectedly this past week. I would also like to uplift in prayer Brian, a relative of Lisa Boyersman, who underwent a double lung transplant last night. 
So let us um, try to keep him, keep Brian, his family, his medical team, and of course the donor's family in the prayer. I recently read an article entitled The Purpose of Thanksgiving. It was written by a lawyer and author, Jay Milgram. He also wrote the book, They Came for Freedom, The Forgotten Epic Adventure of the Pilgrims. He said that the meaning of Thanksgiving has not only been hijacked by food, football, and shopping, but Americans have lost their connection to its very beginnings. So he asks, what is the purpose of Thanksgiving? The pilgrim spirit is one of thankfulness for God's protection on a quest for the freedom to worship freely. Mr. Milbrandt's answer to the question is, we should give thanks for the miraculous, heroic events that transpired to allow us the freedom to gather, to worship, and to believe as we wish. One of the prized possessions most of the men and women brought along on that voyage was a copy of the Geneva Bible, which played an important part in the structure of what would govern the life in this new world. Let us spend a few moments in prayerful silence as we pray on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, as we gather on this Sunday to celebrate the upcoming Thanksgiving's holiday, let us be filled with the Spirit, speaking one to another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with our hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God and even the Father. As we near the start of the holiday season and the beginning of Advent, that wonderful season in the church calendar, we are still under the shadow of COVID and other illnesses. Don't let these events hamper our gratefulness and thankfulness that we express toward you for your many provisions and blessings. We are especially grateful for Christ's sacrificial action on the cross in which he took our place so we may receive forgiveness of sins and gain the promise of eternal life. As we pray this morning, we thank you, Father, for food and we remember the hungry. We thank you for health and remember the sick. We thank you for friends and remember the friendless. We thank you for freedom and remember the enslaved and the persecuted. May these remembrances stir us to service, that your gifts to us be used for others. As we remember the sick, let us remember to pray for those who are listed in our prayer network, especially the Sulola family and Brian. Those who have asked for prayers of this congregation. We thank you for the many who serve you in some manner, whether it be in our communities or here at church. All service to others is acceptable and noteworthy to you. 
And let us not forget our forefathers who were fearless and stepped out in faith at the risk of losing their lives to come to an unknown land so they could enjoy the freedom to worship you. We do have the freedom to pray, and that freedom takes us directly to you as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Psalm 100 and the second book of Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 14. Out of the 150 Psalms, David is attributed to writing 73 of them. Many of David's Psalms played an important part in the Jewish tradition as they were sung as the people went up to synagogue. In the second reading from Chronicles, Solomon had just finished the dedication of the temple, and the Lord reminded him of the covenant that he has with the people, which basically says, if my people turn away from me and the covenant, there will be consequences. But if they humble themselves and repent, I will forgive them. This morning, I'm going to be reading from the Geneva Bible, 1599, the one that the pilgrims brought with them. The words are very similar to the words that are printed on the screen. Here are these words of David from Psalm 100. He exhorteth all to serve the Lord, he who hath chosen us and preserved us and to enter into his assemblies to praise his name. Sing ye loud unto the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come with him with joyfulness. Know ye that even the Lord is God. He hath made us, and now we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with praise and into the courts with rejoicing, and praise him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth is from generation to generation. And now the words from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people among whom my name is called upon do humble themselves and pray and seek my presence and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear in heaven and be merciful to their sin and will heal their land. These are the words of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. And now as we begin, get ready to uh, present our gifts to the Lord, will the ushers please come forward? Mm
pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in thanksgiving for all of your many provisions that you have given us so that we are able to give back to you and to others. We ask for your blessings on this offering this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain, who plumbed the depths of my disgrace and gave me life again, who crushed my curse of sinfulness and clothed me in his life and wrote his law of righteousness with power upon my heart. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who walks beside, who floods my weaknesses with strength and causes me to thrive, whose every promise is enough for every step I take, sustaining me with arms of Thanksgiving. You know, it's not just a national holiday. There, there's other nations who give thanks. Uh, the Hebrew people, they have been celebrating the in gathering of the harvest 
since the time of settled agriculture in the ancient Near East. To be thankful for the harvest. If you think about it today, harvest really has little to do with our common life. Now, except for maybe wondering about um, genetically modified products or whether something is gluten-free or whether it's organic, uh, there's not one person that I'm aware of in this room who earns a living by working in the field, with the exception of maybe Carmen and Carmen's garden and what the musicians did during the summertime, working in the field for the music ministry. But I don't know anyone here who can identify with those, those early <coughs> Americans who worked the fields. But Thanksgiving, as far as the United States is concerned, is intended for something more than just gratitude to God for a, a good yield of produce. Here in this land that will be celebrated this Thursday is a celebration of national origins. For that small company of men and women children who landed at Plymouth Rock. And they laid a foundation for a new nation. And for those of us who are congregationalists, it was a part of that early beginning. It was the foundation for a new faith community in a new free Land. And if you think about it historically, it, it wasn't just uh, the congregational pilgrims on the Mayflower. History reveals that there were actually two strains of immigrants who came and who made up the melting pot of this country. Now, some came because they said, I want to get out of here. I want to have a better life. They wanted to go to a place where there would be new opportunity. And who could blame them? But others, they strained for making a larger, more creative contribution. They were those who did come here for reasons of faith, not fortune. The Puritans. Continuing on with the Mennonites and the Moravians and then the Amish and others. They all desired, yes, a, a better country. Not only a life that would be without poverty, but also a life without fear. That they could be truly free. A life wherein they could obey God and they could serve God according to the dictates of their conscience, as they stood as individuals before God. Not something that was imposed by a king or a hierarchy, but as individuals, we stand before the grace and the judgment of God. And we need to remember, it wasn't easy. It was hard stuff. It wasn't as simple as, well, let's cross the border. You know, we all have a way of romanticizing the past, but I think it is practically impossible to over-idealize the pilgrims. They had tremendous courage. Venturing to a new land, leaving their home soil and family, and establishing a community in an unseen and unknown land. And when I think about a statistic, it blows my mind. Do not forget this, that that community, and I would suspect when you spend that kind of time on a boat, you're pretty close to each other, you know everyone. When they landed here the first winter, half of them died. 
Think of that when we complained about COVID. Okay? Think about it. If everyone you knew in this new land, half of them died in one winter. Wow. Their hardships were staggering. It was staggering. And yet, they were thankful. They were thankful for the blessings of God. And then we know as the story continues to play out, was it all that long? A few short years of landing on Plymouth Rock. We were establishing churches, there's congregational churches all over the East. They established universities, hospitals, they printed books, and did many remarkable things. Oh, what a cherished part of who we are as a land that should always be remembered. Yes, a thankful spirit paves the way for God to do remarkable things. Things to be realized that they continue even today at this place and many other places, remarkable things perhaps. So we join the psalmist in Psalm 100. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. So I would encourage you to thank God. All right? Look around you, okay? And find that which is good and thank God for it. Now, what's wrong? Yeah, we, we have to pay attention to what's wrong, but we need to first begin by a thankful spirit. Find that which is caring and thank God and the person who is doing it. Look around, look inside, look outside, and think of that which is noble true and beautiful and express your praise for it. Express it no matter what the bad and the ugly may be up to because yeah, that's they're up to something. That's up to something. But we start with thanking God for what God has done. And then something that I think we can do a lot more of. And that is thank God others. Thank others. We need that. I've always appreciated his story. Actually, it was an article by Dr. Nick Stennett of the University of Nebraska. He, he did a, 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 a research, he took a study on the Family Strengths Research Project. The objective was what is it that makes families strong? A good subject. Senate and his researchers, they, they identified six qualities that make for strong families. And guess what the first quality was? And one of the most important to be found in strong families was the quality of, this is their language, thankfulness. Kids that grow up in a household where there's a sense of thankfulness, and we can find something to be thankful for. We can always find something to be thankful for. It was critical in the development of strong families. Families that are strong are strong in part, Dr. Stenick concludes, because they express to each other their appreciation for what the other members do and for who they are. <laughs> So do that this Thanksgiving, all right? When you're sitting around the table, build thankfulness because you're going to be building the strength of your family. And when families are strong, our country is strong. It begins by thanking God and thanking others. Now, every Thanksgiving, the story, it's a positive haunting. It always comes to my mind. And I wanted to share it with you. 
because it, it has to do with this thinking God is thinking others. And it is a story that a pastor friend shared with me of a situation that happened in his church. There was this woman who showed up at church and she had a simple prayer. Her prayer was, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. That was it. That was all her prayer. Whenever she would show up in her small group at church and they'd say, would someone like to pray? She would say, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. And it reached the point where, where some of the youth, they, they were kind of teasing her a little bit, like, oh, here comes her prayer again. It's the same prayer we hear all the time. And so somebody asked her, they said, why do you pray that same prayer? And she said, well, I'm actually just combining two prayers. There's two prayers there. She went on to say, I live in a really bad neighborhood. And there will be some nights that violence will come. We'll hear gunshots. And I get my baby girl and, and we lie on the floor and all I can say is, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, we'll fall asleep. And then we'll get up the next morning from being on the floor. The sun will be shining. And then her prayer was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She went on to say, my little girl goes to a pretty rough school. And so when I take her to the bus, and she leaves, my prayer is, oh, Lord, because I have no idea what she's going to experience in school. It, it, I hope everything is fine. So I just say, oh, Lord, we, we, we were concerned about our schools. Oh, Lord. But then when my little one comes home, she gets off the bus. And I'm able to hug her. Then she says, I say, thank you, Jesus. What a remarkable story. She said, those are the only two prayers I know. Pretty good prayers, aren't they? The only prayers I know, and when I get to church, when I get to this place with this community, I realize that God has been so good to me that I put those two prayers together. That's our prayers, too, if you think about it. Oh, Lord. What have we heard this week? What's going on? We're here. There's hope. There's grace. Thank you, Jesus. We live in an old Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So would you say that with me? Join me. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, be thankful then that you don't already have everything you want. I know Santa's coming. Because if you had everything you wanted, what would there be to, be to look forward to? Okay? Be thankful when you don't know something. Because okay? it gives us all an opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times because it is during those difficult times, isn't it? That, that's when we grow. We never grow when life's a slam dunk. It's when we're stretched. So be thankful in the difficulty. Be thankful to God because something good can come. Be thankful for your limitations because <laughs> by recognizing those, it'll give you an opportunity for improvement. And be thankful for each new challenge because it is in the challenge that strength and character is built. It can only be built when there's a challenge, only when there's a challenge. Yeah, and be thankful for mistakes. Okay? Because it's through mistakes that we learn 
valuable lessons. And be thankful when you're tired. Worn out. And weary. Because it means you've worked hard. And you've made a difference. Let us pray. Oh, kind and gracious God, we offer you our thanks and praise for the endless blessings you have bestowed upon us. You have given us the privilege of living in this land, which remains a land of plenty. Move us, Lord, to take time to recount our gifts again this week. Lead us to recognize and to acknowledge your boundless love. And we thank you for the gifts of food, clothing, and shelter, and everything else that you have supplied. But especially do we thank you for Jesus. Bless us and keep us for his name's sake. For it is in his name we pray, and it is in his name we are thankful. Please stand. Pastor Nancy is going to lead us in a litany of thanksgiving. Please join me in the response of reading as printed on the screen. Let us say thanks to God, our Creator for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and the wonder of creation, from earth and sound and sea. For all that is gracious in the lives of men, revealing the image of God the Christ. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. Thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. Thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and pray. Thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in diversity. Thank you, Lord. And all valiant seekers of the truth, liberty, justice, and peace. Thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. Thank you, Lord. Above all, let us give thanks for the great promises and mercies given to us and to all the world in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Christ, praise, and glory. Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Thank you. Please remain standing as we say, and I thank you, Father. Thank you. 
says, greater is he who is in us than anything that is in the world. Go with the remarkable peace and the love of God and be thankful. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon us all and give us all that thankful spirit. And in doing so, God's people learn that revival came. The prayer, O oh Lord, diminished. And thank you, Jesus, roared up because there was a great occurrence of God's blessing. And they realized that something was going on be just, besides just human conventions. And they were thankful. And all God's people said.